what's up guys? This is Steven from TechSteveHD.com, making technology easier. In today's video, I'm gonna do an unboxing and setup on the newest Amazon Echo unit. So sit back and relax, and let's get started. Before we get into this, I just want to answer a few questions that you guys had on my last Echo Dot video. Now, it reached 320 something thousand people, and I really appreciate that support. So, let's talk about some of the questions I had. The first question is Can you use it without Wi Fi? And that's yes or no, meaning if you want to use all the Alexa feature, it does require Wi Fi. But if you just want to use it as a Bluetooth speaker, you can, but it kind of defeats the point. The second question is, can you connect it to a mobile device to use the internet service? If I was going to do it, I would use a separate hotspot because the minute that the Wi-Fi internet gets disconnected, you lose all the features. So, you know, I understand that people want to put them in their cars and do things like that, but it does require a constant Wi-Fi signal to get the most use out of it. The third question is, can you program it without having a smart device? And the answer is yes. The way it works is Amazon set up a mobile kind of base website and as long as it has Wi-Fi, you can do a lot of the same prompts and program this device. Once it's programmed, then you're ready to go. The fourth question is, how come when you set it up to make phone calls, some of your contacts are missing from the directory? The reality of it is, is that a lot of us use our contacts on cloud-based services like Google, Facebook, and things like that. So the application for Alexa does not connect to those contacts so it's only gonna support the contacts that are built into your phone. So for example, if you have Verizon Wireless and they move your contacts from phone to phone that's not on the cloud, with like a Cellbrite machine, then you'll be able to get those contacts right in there. If not, you'll have to find a way to import them into your phone directory to get that full system to work. The fifth question is, can it control Fire TV? Yes, it can. If you like a video about that, leave a comment below this one and I'll see what I can do to make that video for you. Now that I covered some of the questions that you guys have, what is the difference between the full echo unit and a dot? And everything I read and everything that I've used having a dot is really the speaker system. So the dot has a 0.6 millimeter speaker in there and that allows it to have a pretty good sound but really not a lot of bass. So this particular one has a woofer in it to give you a lot more fuller, richer sound. Let's go and unbox it and see what it comes with. So it's got this nice little tab, you just pull it right out of the box. So this is pretty nice. It's got like a little holder below it that has all the goodies inside of it. Below the unit, you have a charger base. Now this is not a USB powered one like it's on the Echo unit. You also get a manual and also some questions to ask. The new Echo design is available in six different colors. You have charcoal fabric, heather gray fabric, the limited edition in red, oak finish, sandstone fabric, silver finish, and you have a walnut finish. One thing I noticed is that this speaker is pretty heavy. I mean, this is for that bass response, so it's gonna be really nice. Also in the back, you have your power cord and it still has the auxiliary output. So if you're not happy with the speaker in this one, you can send it over to another device. So now, and I showed you a few things about the Amazon Echo, let me show you how to connect it to your smart device. The first thing you wanna do is go ahead and plug it in so it can get ready for the setup. And how you know it's plugged in, it's a blue ring on the top that starts moving around. That shows that it's initializing. So from your Android or iPhone, go into your app store and type in Alexa app. Once you get that, go ahead and open it up. From your main screen, go ahead and hit settings, and then scroll down to where it says set up a new device. Press on that. And then you can choose which unit. So I'm gonna choose Echo, Continue, and Connect to Wi-Fi. Now the ring is going around, go ahead and hit Continue. Now hit the Home button one time, or hit Back on an Android device, and go into your settings. From your settings, click on Wi-Fi, and look for the Alexa unit. There's an Amazon unit, press on it, You've connected to your Echo. Go ahead and finish the setup in your Alexa app. Now you have it connected. Go back over to the Alexa app. and It'll show that the Alexa unit is connected. Hit continue. Now you wanna enter your Wi-Fi so you can program this to have the Wi-Fi and you won't have to put this in again. It may take a few minutes to get it set up. 
Now you should get a message that says the Echo is connected to your Wi-Fi. Hit continue and hit update. Hit no speaker. And then there's a short video. Now to test to make sure things connected, let's go and do just a quick example. Alexa, what's the weather like in San Diego? Right now in San Diego, it's 61 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Tonight's forecast has mostly clear skies. Now everything's ready and set up, let me show you what some Amazon skills are. Basically, this unit allows you to connect to some of the different applications that company provide. For example, if you want to connect Spotify, you can actually do that. But let's say, for example, you want to have a cooking app. You can go into the skill sets and browse through the cooking apps, and then you can give it commands to do that different recipe or something like that. From the main app, click on skills, and then you can search through them. But let's put in cooking. Now I have all these different applications. I could then press on one of these and enable it. Now the cool thing about the skill is that since you already have all these echo units on your device, you don't have to go in and put one on each one. It'll actually apply this to every single echo unit that you have. What ingredients can I substitute for chicken broth? All right, ingredient sub. One cup of chicken broth can be substituted by one bouillon cube plus one cup boiling water, or one tablespoon soy sauce plus enough water to make one cup, or one cup vegetable broth. So there's an example. Let me disable it and give it the same command. What can I substitute for chicken broth? A substitute for the food chicken broth is beef broth. You see, it lost all its skill just by me enabling it and disabling it. Another cool thing about this application that you can see new things that are coming out by Echo. So let me give you an example. On the main menu, hit things to try, and you can see there's a whole list right here. Let's click on what's new, and there's a command right there, Alexa. Surprise me. You may think that my poems are bad, but I know they make some people glad. Don't give it a thought. If Shakespeare I'm not, because my beatboxing skills are quite rad. Okay, that's just a random thing she says. Now that I showed you some of the basic setups in it, let me show you how to make it a Bluetooth speaker. Under settings, click on Bluetooth. And as you can see, it's scanning now. There's Echo 5 right there. And now it's connected as a Bluetooth. Now connected to Steven's iPhone. Now I want to take a listen to that speaker to see how much better it sounds than the dot unit. In conclusion, this has a really good bass sound. It's really clean. It's not something that's overpowering or anything like that, but much better than the dot unit. So my takeaway is this. If you want to get the same functionality, get the Echo Dot. If you want something with a better speaker system, go with the Echo. So thanks a lot for watching my video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.